With this 7th generation 7 series saloon, BMW elevates itself back into contention at the top end of the boardroom level luxury sedan segment. Yes, it makes more of a frontal statement, but equally important are the changes made to the engineering and technology of this car, which include a full set of electrified powertrains. It's a rejuvenated proposition. The BMW 7 Series has been with us for almost half a century, and it's always been a showcase for the Munich makers' latest technology. What it's never really had, though, is what a large luxury saloon like this really needs, presence. But that changes right here, right now, with this seventh generation G70 model. What do you think? Makes more of a statement, doesn't it? The 7 Series has long provided the basic engineering for Rolls-Royce models. Now it gets Rolls-Royce style visual impact. And if you don't like it, BMW won't mind too much because 75% of 7 Series production is aimed at markets like China and the US, who've long demanded this kind of enhanced pavement presence. For too long, BMW's flagship four-door has been merely an enlarged 5 Series. This one aims to stand out. It has to. Of course, the changes made to create this Mark 7 model weren't only about aesthetics. It's significantly larger, more luxurious, and considerably more spacious than before. Plus, the underpinnings have had to be substantially redeveloped, not only for the enhanced PHEV tech, but also for the all-electric i7 model we're trying here. Then there's the cabin. BMW promises us a completely new level of luxury here with opulent lottery level features never before seen in this segment. But there's a price to pay for all this, of course, now set at a six figure level. Might a captain of industry who'd previously coveted a rival Mercedes be now prepared to pay it? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test to find out. The truth is that when it comes to drive dynamics, BMW's always struggled a bit to get the 7 Series quite right. Segment customers expect this model line to cosset them like a rival Mercedes S-Class or Audi A8. Yet to preserve its brand integrity, the Munich maker has always also wanted to give this car something likely to detract from that, at least an element of handling character. The sort of thing those competitors don't really have to bother too much about. At the launch of the previous generation G12 7 Series model in 2015 though, there were signs that the Bavarian engineers were finally getting a handle on this conundrum. Because that Mark VI model's design had to be shared with Rolls-Royce, they carefully studied what it was that made a rival S-Class so good over the bumps and sought to emulate it. At the same time as taking a significant amount of weight out of the body shell, thanks to a carbon core structure fashioned from a material mix of high strength steels, aluminium and CFRP or carbon fibre reinforced plastic. This made possible more agile responses that could be embellished by various handling orientated options. Plus, to keep potential Audi defectors interested, there was four-wheel drive for those wanting it. All of this technology, as you would expect, continues to figure prominently in this 7th generation 7 series, but as the radically different visual persona of this G70 model suggests, quite a lot else has been introduced to embellish it. That CLAR chassis-based carbon core structure has been evolved into what BMW calls a flex platform, so as to be able to support a full EV version, the i7 model that we're trying here. These still aren't proper dedicated EV underpinnings such as you'd find in a rival Mercedes EQS, because basically the same chassis must also undergird combustion-based variants in the 7 Series range. Derivatives which in this 7th generation model you're also required to plug in, BMW having decided to limit the fueled lineup to PHEV petrol power. 
a rather strange decision that, given that since the turn of the century, the vast majority of UK 7 Series sales have been based around a 3-litre diesel engine, which continues in European markets in a 740D X-Drive variant featuring mild hybrid assistance. Anyway, what we were left with at the time of this test in early summer 2023, for the UK at least, was a couple of very different approaches to 7 Series motoring to suit the current new, more enlightened zeitgeist, most models embellished with X-Drive four-wheel drive. There are two plug-in hybrid variants, the base 750E with 490 horsepower and the M760E with 571 horsepower, each powered by the brand's 3-litre turbocharged straight-six petrol engine assisted by an electric motor powered by an 18.7 kilowatt hour battery. The even greener alternative, as already mentioned, lies with this full electric i7 available in three guises. A base rear-driven S-Drive 50 derivative with 449 horsepower, this standard X-Drive 60 version with 544, and the fastest M70 X-Drive variant with 650 horsepower. All derivatives using the same battery with a 101.7 kilowatt hour usable capacity. Whatever your choice, as we said, much has changed here, with probably the headline improvement being that this 7 Series finally gets proper air suspension, an adaptive two-axle setup with automatic self-leveling. The suspension's air supply is controlled individually for each wheel, and of course the system adapts to the My Mode drive setting you've chosen, seemingly flattening the tarmac in comfort and firming up nicely in Sport or Sport Plus while simultaneously lowering the car by 10 millimetres, the latter also happening when you crest the legal limit. You can also raise the suspension by 20 millimetres at the touch of a button for rough roads or steeply angled ramps. BMW is once again offering integral active steering on this car as an option to enhance cornering agility and improve low speed manoeuvring. To this end, the rear wheels are turned in either the same or the opposite direction to those at the front by up to 3.5 degrees. When manoeuvring, this has the effect of making the turning circle around 0.8 metres shorter. As before, the option for this system comes packaged up with BMW's Executive Drive Pro active roll stabilisation feature, which employs swivel motors powered by a 48-volt electric motor to smooth out the lateral forces, inducing body roll through dynamically taken corners. For this G70-era model, the setup's been improved to counter rolling movements caused by bumps on one side of the car, body height on the corresponding side of the car automatically adjusted to compensate. Should you find yourself running late or have instructed your chauffeur to take a secondary route at speed to avoid pestering paparazzi, you'll be surprised to find just how dynamically this 7th generation 7 can now respond with all this tech fitted. In fact, we're surprised by just how much BMW has prioritised involving handling with this G70 era design. The near actuator wheel slip limitation system already seen on the brand's lesser models has now been fitted to maximise agility and poise, which means instant response to corrective inputs from the re-engineered Servotronic electric power steering system whose ratio now varies with steering angle. Other changes include a more rigid body, wider tracks and broader tyres, all combining with the prodigious all-weather grip on offer from the standard X-Drive system, if that's been fitted. And the result, if you want it, is a completely different level of driver engagement to that you'd get in an A8, an S-Class or an EQS. Few owners will ever truly explore that, or the significant reserves of power on offer, BMW's intentionally pitched this well above the outputs of the Mercedes alternatives. Take this i7, which, as we said, puts out 544 horsepower in this mid-level X-Drive 60 form. Compare that to the mere 360 horsepower of a mainstream Mercedes EQS 450h+. That, of course, makes this i7 quite a bit quicker. 62 miles an hour dispatched in just 4.7 seconds en route to a very un-EV-like top speed of 149 miles an hour. 
but the BMW owner pays for that in terms of EV operating range, a best of 387 miles in this 60 model, and the entry-level S-Drive 50 version is 8 miles less than that. Compare those readings to the possible 440 mile figure you'd get from the kind of EQS AMG Line Premium model that would cost you about the same as this X-Drive 60 derivative. The Bavarian brand contends that if this G70 7 Series model's power outputs were comparable with Mercedes, the range readings would be too, a position supported by the 348 mile EV range figure of the fastest i7 M70 X-Drive variant. This offers 650 horsepower, basically the same as its Mercedes AMG EQS 53 4MATIC Plus Arch Rival, which returns almost exactly the same EV range figure. In terms of BMW's power output policy, it's a similar story if you're looking at a plug-in hybrid 7. The base 750e X-Drive model offers 490 horsepower, sprints to 62 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds, and offers up to 53 miles of EV range. Compare that to its much pricier, most obvious PHEV rival, the Mercedes S580 EL, which has just 367 horsepower and makes 62 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds, but offers up to 63 miles of EV range. A question of priorities then. If yours is ultimate performance and you're interested in this 7, then you'll be directed to the top M760e X-Drive, which has a 571 horsepower output within a whisker of a Mercedes AMG S63e performance model costing over £65,000 more. And much the same sort of performance as that rival, rest to 62 miles an hour, occupying just 4.3 seconds. The M760e shares the same 53 mile EV driving figure as its range stablemate. All of the 7 series model rest to 62 mile an hour sprint stats we've quoted are aided by a standard launch control system that aims to get you off the line Alonso style or out of harm's way should your executive cavalcade be ambushed by kidnappers. Delete as appropriate. You don't really choose a car like this though based on stats. Priorities in the boardroom level luxury saloon segment tend instead to lie with comfort and refinement. As we've been telling you, this BMW has matched its Mercedes rivals in the first area and it's pretty close in the second, though there's just a whisper of wind resistance from the mirrors when you crest the legal limit. Technology too is key of course. We've already mentioned some of it, but not yet the way that the optional Park Assist Pro Pax Maneuver Assistant can be set to remember a maneuver into a range of frequently visited difficult parking spots, say in an underground car park. Reach the location again and the car will automatically slot itself into the same bay controlling throttle, brake and steering, which if correctly specified, it can of course also do at cruising speeds thanks to an active cruise control with stop and go function that combines with a steering and lane control assistant and works at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. If you've opted for this i7, then a few of the tech features might not please quite as much. Hollywood composer Hans Zimmer apparently curated the iconic sounds noise that accompanies selection of the sport drive mode. You'd think he could have come up with something that sounds a bit less like a tube train leaving a station. And unlike lesser EVs, this one doesn't allow you to conveniently alter brake regeneration using steering wheel paddles. As with other BMW electric models, you have to do this via an energy recovery menu buried in the center screen. There are high, moderate, low and adaptive options. There is a steering wheel paddle provided for something quite different on the left hand side labelled boost. A tug on it releases a brief 10 second burst of extra power for rapid overtaking. In summary then, a technical showcase, much as seven models have always been. This one though is a more unique confection than its predecessors, as different from its rivals as it is from other BMWs. One thing though is unlikely to change. The 7 Series has long been voted a chauffeur's favourite. It still will be, just for more of the right reasons.
There's never been a 7 Series quite like this one, and not only because, as here, this G70 design can be full electric. For some time, BMW has known that the 7 Series needed a more striking look, hence the ungainly grille added to final versions of the old 6th generation G12 model. This replacement car is striking for more of the right reasons, a larger, more sophisticated and more cohesive design, though one that still references the familiar long bonnet and three box silhouette proportions of its model line. It's 130 millimetres longer, 48 millimetres wider and 51 millimetres taller than before and is only offered in long wheelbase form. This lengthier body shapes between axles length being 5 millimetres longer than the previous model. Blue decorative elements in the side skirts that flow into vertical air curtain slots behind the front wheel arches indicate this particular i7 variant's all electric remit which you might think would be better served by smaller wheels, but no, they're huge of course, usually of either 19 or 20 inches in size, with these 21 inch rims offered at extra cost. The real theatre though, lies with this G70 design's controversial front end treatment. For the first time, BMW's flagship saloon has been thoroughly visually separated from lesser models in the range. Whether this nose is truly elegant is another question. It's certainly trying hard to be. The huge kidney grille has a surround that can illuminate, providing you haven't specified the black frame that comes with this test car's extended high gloss shadow line trim. And it's flanked by light functions divided into two separate areas. The lower panel on each side houses crystal LED matrix headlights, but it's the upper strip near to the bonnet line that might catch your eye, particularly if, as here, it's been fitted with the iconic glow option. With that, crystals from Swarovski, arranged in L shapes, form the role of side lights and daytime running lights. The crystals are backlit by LED units, 14 in the day and 22 at night, for a truly unique illuminating signature. Much more subtle are the visual hallmarks of this i7 variant, the badge on the grill, the BMW Roundel's blue surround, and the horizontal bar in this lower air intake. What you think of the rear end styling will depend on whether you liked the extrovert nose. If you didn't, this subtler look will be much more to your taste with slim and elegant LED light units that extend well into the car's flanks. The brand's usual L-shaped tail lamp theme is provided by an integrated chrome strip with the light bars positioned below it. The braking light and turn indicator light are generated by two slim strips below the main rear lamps and with this i7 blue decorative elements in the rear apron draw attention to the lack of tailpipes and as at the front the BMW logo has a blue surround. Okay time to take a look inside. Now you can of course gain access via your phone should you wish via a digital key app you can share with your chauffeur. And should you specify the iconic glow crystal headlamps we referred to earlier, this seven will lay on an elaborate welcome and goodbye light ceremony for you. With this on approach to the car, first the illuminated surround of the BMW kidney grille is activated, followed by a sparkle from the crystal headlights. Then the standard fit dynamic light carpet appears with LED lights integrated into the door sills, projecting four graphics, one after the other, onto the ground below. The key to this car though is not what it looks like from the outside, but how it strikes you here in the interior. You don't after all sit in a private jet and worry about what the fuselage looks like to passers-by. In the past, the 7 Series model line has accepted secondary status to the Mercedes S-Class and even the Audi A8 when it comes to luxury opulence and depth of cabin quality. But this G70 design lavishly commits to a six-figure status on both fronts. You're surrounded by buttery smooth leather, classy veneers and exquisite detail touches like intricate speaker grills and secondary controls that can be fashioned from cut glass. But 
It's not an interior likely to please a traditionalist. Technology dictates form, function, colour and ambience. Still, if you're ready for a new approach to luxury, you might like it very much. Much, predictably, is borrowed from the iX SUV, and in a minute we'll get to the curved display panel originally pioneered by that car, but all BMW's latest designs have that, so we'll start with something you probably won't have seen before, this so-called interaction bar, which is standard above base trim. It initially looks like a crystalline surfaced interior mid-fascia trimming strip stretching right across the cabin, extending round into the doors and supplementing the ambient lighting by illuminating in different colours. But there's more. Beyond just being pretty, the interaction bar also illustrates key functions. An incoming call, for instance, or glowing red with the car's safe exit system if you're about to open the door in front of another vehicle. The interaction bar also houses touch-sensitive controls for the glove box, the ventilation and the hazard warning lights. Right, what about that curved display setup we mentioned, part of the brand's advanced BMW Live Cockpit Professional Media Package? Well, the 12.3-inch instrument display part of it showcases sophisticated graphics with a content menu that determines what you see in the middle of the screen. A digital speedo, journey data, drive assist features, a route preview with a compass, media and radio selections, a G-force meter, and GPS mapping. If mapping, you might want to select the third of the three available layout options, which displays your route to the right of a slash across the screen. The other two layouts give you a choice of either a rev counter or a power meter. All of this is complemented by further customizable settings for the head-up display. There's a choice of standard view, directional view, assisted view, sport view, or reduced view options, all with speed sign recognition. Anything the instrument screen can't tell you, and much that it can, will be found on the joined-in left-hand part of the curved display, a 14.9-inch centre-dash control display that's a recipient of the company's latest generation Operating System 8 software. Nearly all the car's climate functions have been inhaled by this screen and sit in a very detailed climate menu, accessible by a virtual button in the centre of its lower frame. The right-hand edge of the monitor has shortcut options for media, phone and nav, plus a menu option connecting you into a confusing layout full of tiny icons, which is why you'll probably want to stick to the tiled screen you get when the display first springs into life. This shows large widget sections starting with primary features like telephone, radio and mapping, beyond which you can swipe right for things like weather info, a route planner, consumption data and traffic conditions. Unlike with other recent installations of BMW's Operating System 8 software, a lower capstan iDrive controller has been retained, which gives this cabin a usability advantage over rival Mercedes models. But you may find it easier to access what you want by gaining mastery of the car's intelligent personal assistant voice control. In our view, arguably one of the most advanced systems out there. It can even learn your routines and automate them. For example, lowering the driver's window when you reach the ticket barrier each day at your office entrance. And the voice activation element is properly intuitive. Just preface what you want to say with Hey BMW. However you access all the media functions, there's an awful lot to get to grips with and some of the functions are properly cutting edge. The 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, for instance, ideal for TikTok-obsessed teenagers. Plus, there's built-in Alexa functionality if you want it, and a very good cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, which constantly factors in traffic levels along your route. The these days expected wirelessly accessible Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is, of course, built in. Plus, this centre screen has sections for news, weather and podcasts. Bear in mind that many of the digital services are life limited before becoming chargeable. Quite a few features require access via a BMW ID, which you'll already have if you're using the provided My BMW app, and which you can add to any designated smartphone, so personal interior settings and activated features can be instantly communicated to the car whenever you're driving it. 
You can add to that menu of features in the course of your ownership life thanks to over-the-air updates and extra tech that can be purchased via the online Connected Drive BMW shop. Enough on screens, what else will you notice here? Well, there's a new age way of operating the air vents for fan speed with these little sliders on the interaction bar with little directional toggles just beneath. The steering wheel has two spokes with base trim or as here, three spokes with the M and M Sport models. And as we've mentioned, its control panels contain rocker switches and scroll wheels as well as buttons offering haptic feedback when pressed. A smartly designed control panel on the centre console hosts the optionally crystal finished iDrive controller, plus the start stop button, the audio system's volume control, and buttons to control vehicle functions. Also positioned here are the My Modes drive setting buttons and the redesigned gear selector. You'll have few complaints when it comes to the seats. These freshly developed standard comfort front chairs come trimmed in either merino or veganza quilted leather in a choice of colours and offer wider surfaces than the previous model as well as extensive electric adjustment, seat heating and lumbar support. They can also be had upholstered in a very exclusive part merino wool and part cashmere combination and either way they're adjustable via the door mounted controls or the relevant menu in the iDrive control system. All-round visibility is fine and supplemented by an excellent surround view camera system. And when it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Both the door bins and the glove box are averagely sized, and just below the wireless charging mat at the base of the centre stack, there are individually lidded silver-framed cup holders, though they can't warm or cool your drink like the ones in an X7. The twin-lidded bin between the seats has a couple of USB-C ports and a 12-volt socket, and there are ticket clips in the sun visors, though no overhead sunglasses compartment. Right, let's take a look in the rear, which you can expect to be uber spacious given the standardization of the 5,391 mm long wheelbase. If you're a captain of industry, this might be the only part of this 7 Series you actually care about. Those with such a status are going to want the option we have fitted here, the automatic door mechanism. With this fitted to open any of the car's doors, all you have to do is touch the flush fitting door handle or, of course, use the radio operated key. As with all boardroom level luxury saloons, what you get back here depends on how much you've spent. The really exclusive seating and media features all residing on the options list. But much is also standard. Each rear seat passenger has a door mounted 5.5 inch touchscreen console for control of the car's various entertainment functions, as part of which each occupant can connect their own smartphone to the car's Bluetooth system and make or receive calls routed exclusively to the speakers around their position in the car. Seat heating is included and the four zone climate control system with its B pillar vents uses a solar sensor to optimise temperature adjustment. Beyond that, you're going to want this lovely Sky Lounge panoramic glass sunroof, which at night puts on a bespoke light show using light threads backlit by LED units. The starting point for additional seating opulence is the rear comfort pack that gives you multifunctional rear seats with cooled ventilation and massaging, plus rear window and side window powered blinds, warmed armrests, and these silver travel and comfort system attachments to the front seat backs so that things like tablets and fold-out tables can be added to them. But what you'll really want if you're spending someone else's money is the top executive pack we've got fitted here. This gives you this executive lounge center rear console armrest which incorporates twin USB-C ports and from which twin cup holders slide out. More importantly, the executive pack also upgrades you to this truly opulent reclining executive lounge rear seat on the passenger side. To use it, select lounge position from the little screen on the door. Then as the ambient lighting strip on the back of the seat ahead illuminates, that chair ahead will move right forward. Simultaneously, a calf support rises beneath your knees. The backrest reclines to a torso angle of 42.5 degrees 
and a footrest extends out of the seat ahead. Lovely. If you've spent even more on the extras list, once you're comfortable, you can even enjoy your own private cinema experience, courtesy of this car's party piece and enormous 31.3 inch 8K theatre screen that folds out of the roof and has built-in Amazon Fire TV. It powers into place in front of you to the accompaniment of dimmed ambient lighting, along with a musical composition from Hollywood film composer Hans Zimmer. And it has to be had with the optional powered blind for the side and rear windows, which activate to shade the screen from reflections when in use, as does the blind for the panoramic roof. With everything in place, on the move you'll be able to use streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime or YouTube, stream videos, play games, listen to music, get information and watch downloaded programmes. There's nothing like this in any rival at any price, but we can't help thinking it needs a touch more development. You can move the screen nearer or further from your eye line, but the movement on offer is very limited and you always feel that you're sitting a bit too close to it, like sitting at the front row of a concert and having to crane your neck to get a better view. More seriously, perhaps, with the screen retracted like this, the driver can't use the rear view mirror. Strangely, one of the virtual sort, operated by a roof camera, isn't yet available. Other little quirks include the fact that whatever viewing format you select, it never quite fills the whole width of the screen. And with third-party apps like Netflix, the theatre display surface loses its touch sensitivity, which means the fiddly need to scroll through the streaming menus using the little screen on your door. The theatre screen will nearly always be specified with the upgraded Diamond Surround 4D version of this car's Bowers & Wilkins surround sound system, which has 36 speakers, four in the headliner, sound exciters in the seat backrests, and a prodigious 1,965 watt output. It's an awesome setup and you can connect up to it with independently controlled Bluetooth headphones. Even if your 7 Series hasn't got all these extras fitted, we think it'll still all feel a lot more opulent than a comparably equipped Mercedes EQS or S-Class, and there's a vast amount of headroom and leg space. Unlike in an EQS though, any centre passenger will be hampered by this chunky transmission tunnel which is the downside of this i7 sharing its platform with combustion engine variants. But how often will any car in this class carry through at the back? Almost never. So just sit back and enjoy the comfort and luxury. The pillowy head restraints, the quilted seat back pockets, even the grab handles are stitched. Right, enough in the rear, it's time to get out and take a look at the boot. But if your 7 Series has the automatic door mechanism we mentioned earlier, and your chauffeur hasn't sprinted round quickly enough to grab your door, all it takes to open things up is a touch on the door trim. Or in the front, a touch on the fascia's interaction bar. Now don't worry, your kids aren't going to crash their doors into the ankles of waiting teachers at the end of the school run. A collision protection function when opening the doors utilises the data from 12 ultrasound sensors on either side of the car and incorporates a sensitive obstruction alert. Right, trunk space. Now it's activated by a power operated boot lid of course, which can be activated by a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you're approaching laden down with bags. Once everything's open, a 500 litre space is revealed in this i7, substantially smaller than the 610 litre trunk of a rival Mercedes EQS, though that's because the EQS, like a Tesla Model S, is a hatch, not a saloon. The plug-in hybrid 7 series models make amends, offering 525 litres, a large improvement on the figure of the previous generation, 745e, and a big increase on the 325 litre figure of a rival Mercedes S580 EL. You get underfloor storage too, easily enough for a pair of charging leads, plus there are bag hooks, four tie down points and a warning triangle integrated into the boot lid. If you need room for lengthier items, you'll be pleased to find a ski hatch fitted, even with the executive pack lounge style rear seat arrangement fitted here. 
Despite the lack of an engine beneath the bonnet, there's no further frunk space up front. More evidence of this G70 model's lack of a bespoke EV platform. Unlike in the iX, you can open the bonnet, though there aren't many reasons why you'd want to, except to top up the washer fluid, or perhaps to peer at the drive motor, which is revealed beneath this wide plastic panel. The days of a relatively affordable 7 Series are long gone, and the final nail in that particular coffin was hammered in by BMW's decision not to sell in the UK the more accessible mild hybrid diesel engine 7 Series variants it offers in some other European markets. We won't get the 760i xDrive V8 mild hybrid petrol version either. Instead, every 7 sold here will be the one you have to plug in either a PHEV or, as in the case of the i7 variant tested here, a full EV. At the time of this test in early summer 2023, the PHEV 7 Series range was split between the entry-level 750e xDrive offering 490 horsepower, priced at around £104,000 and offered in either base excellence spec or for £4,500 more in M Sport trim. The PHEV alternative is the M760e xDrive offering 571 horsepower and available in a single M spec costing just over £119,000. As for this all-electric i7, prices start from a fraction over £100,000 for the entry-level S-Drive 50 rear-driven version. At the time of filming, you needed around £114,000 for this all-wheel drive X-Drive 60 model with 544 horsepower. Either way, there's a choice of two spec levels, Excellence or, for £4,500 more, this M Sport version. At the time of this test, BMW hadn't yet provided a price for the faster i7 M70 X-Drive model, which ups power to 650 horsepower. But we think you should budget around £130,000 for one of those. Can we talk in terms of a competitive value proposition, given the price hike in play here? Well, possibly. After all, if you're looking at the base 750e xDrive PHEV, the only really direct rival, Mercedes S580 E L, costs £15,000 more and gives you 123 horsepower less, though it does go 10 miles further on each charge. If you're prepared to consider a luxury SUV rather than a luxury sedan, a Range Rover P460e in long wheelbase form costs nearly £138,000 in the only autobiography trimmed form available at the time of this test. Not every PHEV powered large luxury saloon you could consider is pricier than a 7 Series. Audi fans will point out that an A860 TFSIE long wheelbase would save you £11,000 over a 750e, but that's a much older design with nearly half the EV drive range and fuel consumption capability. The Porsche Panamera in plug-in form would be another model we could reference if that brand still offered a long wheelbase body style, but it doesn't. What about this all-electric i7? Well, at first glance, this car is aimed squarely at the Mercedes EQS, except that it isn't quite. This i7 xDrive 60 model's 544 horsepower output is well above the 360 horsepower figure of a mainstream EQS 450h+. Yet the xDrive 60's £114,000 asking price is only £7,000 more than a base EQS and pretty much bang on alongside the AMG line premium variants that most customers of that Mercedes choose. The 453-mile EV range of an EQS 450h Plus looks good against this mid-level i7's 387-mile figure, though. The faster i7 M70 xDrive model we mentioned earlier, though, will, we think, offer a much better value package than a Mercedes-AMG EQS 53 4Matic. At the time of this test, that Merc cost nearly £162,000. And an i7 M70 matches that EQS 53 in terms of power and EV range. There aren't really any other options until the full EV Range Rover arrives in this segment. Big luxury EV models like the Genesis G80 Electrified, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT Quattro aren't offered with long wheelbase body shapes, so aren't really comparable to what's on offer here. 
nor is the Tesla Model S, which costs from around £95,000 in its latest form at the time of this test. OK, let's assume that you've decided that this 7th generation 7 series is exactly what you want. Before making a final decision, though, you're going to need to know exactly how generous the Bavarian brand has been with standard equipment. So let's take a look at that now, starting with driving stuff. Now, all versions of this 7 Series get adaptive two-axle air suspension, X-Drive all-wheel drive and sport automatic transmission. As with other BMWs, there's a driving mode system that enables you to tweak steering and throttle response to your mood, hence the My Mode selectable drive settings that all 7 Series models get. There are three main ones with the usual Sport, Sport Plus and Efficient options, joined by Expressive, Relax and Theatre settings, plus an everyday personal mode. In addition, this i7 gets the brand's iconic sounds electric package too for a powertrain soundtrack as you drive. What else? Well, all 7 Series models come with the brand's iconic glow illuminating kidney grille, adaptive LED auto headlamps with a high beam assistant, a panoramic glass roof, soft closed doors and a powered boot lid. As you'd expect in this bracket, all 7 variants also get power folding mirrors, acoustic side glass, an alarm and a lovely welcome light carpet that illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. OK, let's look at the standard features fitted inside. For the cabin, all 7 Series variants get merino leather upholstery with a choice of four colours, plus electrically adjustable and heated multifunctional front sports seats with memory settings, a Climate Comfort heated windscreen, a leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel, a head-up display, cruise control, ambient lighting, automatic air conditioning with four-zone control, velour floor mats, heated rear seats and anthracite headliner, a through-loading function for the rear seats and fine wood oak mirror finish interior trim. In addition, there's an interior camera which you can use to take pictures in the cabin. Those images can be transmitted by simply scanning a QR code in the control display with any smartphone connected to the car via Wi-Fi. Given the substantial size of this car, you'll be pleased to find that there are lots of parking aids as well. Not only the usual all-round sensors, but also BMW's Parking Assistant Plus tech which helps the driver to select and park in spaces either parallel or perpendicular to the road. This 7 also gets the brand's clever reversing assistant, which offers automated reversing in confined spaces or situations where the driver's view is impaired. A surround view camera with parking view, front and rear panorama views and a 3D view is additionally included as is the BMW Drive Recorder, which uses the Driver Assistance System's cameras to record video images all around the vehicle. If the anti-theft recorder is triggered, it will also activate the interior camera we mentioned earlier and relay a message to the customer's smartphone. You'll want to know about infotainment and media stuff, so let's start with the fact that all 7 Series models get the full BMW Live Cockpit Professional BMW Operating System 8 package, which gives you a 12.3-inch instrument display paired with a 14.9-inch center dash control display, the latter maintained by remote software upgrades. The center screen is your access point for a cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, Bluetooth with audio streaming, 4G LTE connectivity, a DAB tuner, and a high-quality 18-speaker, 655-watt Bowers & Wilkins surround sound DAB audio system. There's gesture control too, so you can control certain functions, audio volume for instance, with a twirl of your fingers. And the car's BMW Operating System 8 setup also includes the latest version of the brand's clever, intelligent personal assistant. With this, naturally formulated spoken instructions can be used to do things like adjust the air conditioning, open a window or operate the sunroof. 
selected driver assistance systems can also be voice controlled. The other standard media package inclusion your dealer will want to tell you about on this car is called Connected Package Pro. That gives you a whole range of media connectivity services, though only for three years, after which you'll have a subscription to pay. As you'd want in this day and age, these services include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but there's much more besides. Some of the other connected package professional features include real-time traffic information, which supplies details about the location and duration of any delays you might encounter on your journey. Remote services, which helps you to locate your car if you've forgotten where you've parked it, and can remotely lock or unlock the doors from wherever you happen to be. Plus, there's a concierge services feature that connects you to a BMW call centre agent who's available as an around-the-clock assistant for any questions you have about your car or your journey as you drive it. There's also connected parking which offers multi-storey and on-street parking information in selected UK and European cities. BMW Maps which allows you to send destinations to your car from your home or office PC and an in-car experiences package which adapts the interior ambience to your mood. The connected package professional setup also includes connected music which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs from Spotify. As would now be expected from the brand, 7 Series customers additionally get a full suite of BMW Connected Drive services. These include teleservices, which can send you service appointments and vehicle-specific service data. BMW suite of online services, which gives you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts and a whole range of BMW apps. And intelligent functionalities, which learn your habits for greater journey in comfort and can read out text messages to you. Talking of being connected, all 7 Series owners will be offered the use of a clever My BMW app that can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar and even prompt you as to when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. It even has a share live trip status feature that allows the driver to share their current location and time of arrival with business partners, friends or family. Enough with items standard across the range. Let's take some time now to look at the things that differentiate the various trim levels. The main visual differentiator with base excellence spec being the 19 inch double spoke alloy wheels. You're more likely though, as we said earlier, to want this more dynamic looking M Sport spec, which swaps those rims out for 20 inch M Aero alloys featuring M Sport brakes with dark blue calipers and features M Sport exterior styling, which includes high gloss shadow line exterior trim. The interior of M Sport models is marked out by M Sport interior styling, a three spoke rather than two spoke steering wheel and most specifically by the BMW interaction bar which stretches across the fascia and can illuminate to illustrate key functions. As you'd expect the M Performance M750e xDrive and i7 M70 xDrive models get their own bespoke trim package. Visually they're differentiated by 21 inch M aero wheels featuring M sport brakes with black calipers plus an M rear spoiler, M mirror caps and extended high gloss shadow line exterior trim for the kidney grills frame and struts as well as for the rear lights and the rear trim insert. Sun protection glass is included too and more significantly these M performance variants get what is a pricey option on other 7s the brand's Executive Drive Pro package, which gives you active anti-roll bars and integral active steering, which gives you rear wheel steering for sharper corner turning and tighter parking speed manoeuvrability. 
Let's get back to the mainstream models and talk about options, nearly all of which we've got fitted here. Your dealer is going to want you, first of all, to consider the various extra cost packages available. The Sky Lounge Pack gives you BMW's lovely Sky Lounge panoramic glass sunroof, which will delight those inside the car with a bespoke light show, which uses light threads backlit by LED units. The structure this creates replicates the pattern of the quilting on the seat surfaces and the glass construction consists of three highly functional and fully integrated individual sections of glass. A pattern within the construction emits the light and intensifies the feeling of exhilaration when the car's moving. Lovely. The front comfort pack adds cool ventilation and a massage system to the front seats, plus a heat comfort system which warms things like the door armrests and the lid of the box between the seats. You might also want to consider the Technology Plus pack, which gives you three key things. BMW's Driving Assistant Pro package of camera drive assist features, more on that in a few moments. The Parking Assistant Pro setup, which can remember parking manoeuvres and replicate them at stored parking locations. And most significantly, this car's desirable audio upgrade option, the 4D Bowers and Wilkins Diamond Surround Audio System, which has 36 speakers, a 1,965 watt output, and offers in-seat exciters that vibrate with the audio output. If you're regularly going to be chauffeured in your 7 Series, the final two priciest packs are going to be of most interest. For just over £5,000 more, the rear comfort pack gives you cooled ventilation, a massaging system and electric adjustment for the rear seats, plus rear window and side window powered blinds. With the rear comfort pack, the heat comfort system we just mentioned is extended to the rear as well as at the front. And there are travel and comfort system attachments to the front seat backs so that attachments like fold out tables can be added to them, allowing busy executives to work on the move. If though you want to experience everything the back of this 7 Series can offer and you've over £11,000 of your company's money to spend, you'll go straight for the top executive pack we've got fitted here. This gives you all the rear comfort pack features just mentioned along with ventilated front seats and it upgrades you to reclining executive lounge rear seats with an executive lounge centre rear console. The key executive pack feature though is the one you'll want the most, the 31.3 inch 8K BMW theatre screen with Amazon Fire TV built in, which electrically extends out of the ceiling, even if the Sky Lounge panoramic glass sunroof is fitted. If you're going to be driving this BMW yourself and you've chosen an M Sport trimmed 750e or i7 model, you'll be offered the M Sport Pro Pack. This basically gives the car the look of the top M760e or M70M performance variants with 21 inch wheels, extended high gloss shadow line trim, an M rear spoiler, M Sport brakes with black calipers, sun protection glass, and inside M seat belts. On to individual options. Now, the BMW theatre screen we just mentioned can be specified as a standalone option for an extra £4,400, as can the travel and comfort system front seat back attachment points. And you can have a tow bar. Otherwise, the key extras you'll want to look at are the iconic glow crystal headlights with LED backlit Swarovski crystals and costing just under £2,000 more. And the Executive Drive Pro feature we mentioned earlier, which gives you active anti-roll bars and rear wheel steering. That's £3,850 more. The Parking Assistant Pro feature we also mentioned earlier that memorises parking space manoeuvres can also be added, as can sun protection glass. Avoid entry-level trim and for around £1,500 more, you can also specify a very Lord Sugar style feature, automatic front and rear doors. With these fitted to open or close them, 
All those on board need to do is touch the handle set flush into the body or use the buttons in the BMW interaction bar at the front of the cabin or on the rear door trim. The opening and closing sequence can also be activated using the radio operated key. For the interior, we'd want to upgrade the cabin with BMW's crafted clarity glass, cut glass finish for the minor controls. And there's an expensive BMW individual Gran Lusso interior world trimming package. And we have that here. There are various BMW individual upholstery options, including three colors in more unusually stitched Veganza leather, a no cost option. If you've gone further, and selected a seat covering that combines the standard merino leather with wool and cashmere, then you'll also be offered the opportunity to add in an anthracite Alcantara headliner too. If you don't like the standard fine wood oak mirror finish cabin trimming, you can at extra cost change it for either individual open poured fine wood ash or carbon fibre. You might not have to pay your dealer more for your choice of exterior paint colour because quite a few of the available shades can be ordered at no extra cost, but inevitably the ones you'll probably like won't be among them. This test car's individual tanzanite blue finish for instance. The two-tone oxide finishes are particularly nice, but you'll need £11,550 more for those. There are some different 19 and 20 inch wheel options too and huge 22 inch M light alloy wheels are available on request. So that's talked you through just about everything. And we should also mention that if you've opted for this M Sport trim level, don't want to tick boxes and just want absolutely everything a 7 Series has to offer, there's a full house ultimate pack available priced at the time of this test at 29000 400 pounds and fitted to this test car and that really does get you everything the theater system and executive lounge rear seats the executive drive pro handling pack the automatic front and rear doors the 21 inch wheels and styling features of the m performance models the iconic glow crystal headlights the sky lounge roof the diamond surround audio upgrade the crafted clarity cabin features the whole caboodle. On to safety, which as you'd expect from BMW is well accounted for, hence this car's full house five star Euro NCAP safety rating. Like all the brand's models, all seven series variants get what the brand calls an active guard with active protection system. This gives the car features such as collision warning, pedestrian and cyclist warning with a braking function and crossroads warning plus for do or die overtakers the system reacts to oncoming traffic too a speed limit info feature with a no overtaking indicator is fitted as is a manual speed limit assist setup which you can set to suit prevailing local limits and there's also lane change warning with active lane return in addition your seven will come with rear collision prevention and rear crossing traffic warning, including braking functions, which together reduce the danger of a collision when reversing towards roads that are difficult to see into. There's also an exit warning function, which provides a safety boost when the vehicle is stationary with an acoustic signal and flashing LEDs alerting occupants just about to open a door in the face of an approaching vehicle or cyclist. At that point, the doors will be prevented from opening automatically. Other expected features include traffic sign recognition and an alertness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness. That's enough on the camera stuff. As you'd expect, all the usual passive safety systems feature, including twin front side and curtain airbags. If inflated, these activate the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, 
how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency services would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. The setup's been designed to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistant service directly. Other passive safety features include front and rear ISOFIX child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC Plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's plenty of braking peace of mind as well with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC or cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that, in the event of an impact, will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop and a performance control torque vectoring system that improves agility by varying the drive torque through the rear wheels depending on condition. In addition, there's a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Want to go even further? Well, a key option is what BMW calls its Driving Assistant Pro pack, which costs an extra £1,650 or comes as part of the Technology Plus pack and Ultimate pack options we mentioned earlier. The Driving Assistant Pro pack gives you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features and will talk you through them. First, there's automatic speed limit assist, which allows the car's speed to be regulated not just by maintaining the desired safe distance from vehicles travelling front, but also by observing speed restrictions along the route. Speed limits are detected either by the car's built-in speed limit info traffic sign recognition system or by looking ahead along the route using data from the navigation setup. There's also wrong way warning, which as the name suggests, makes a huge fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. And lane departure warning with active lane return. There's also an evasion assistant that aids you in emergency steering situations. The Driving Assistant Pro pack additionally includes an emergency stop assistant, which will sense if you've suddenly become incapacitated while driving, say after a heart attack. Having checked to see that you are indeed unresponsive, your BMW will then automatically slow itself, put on its hazard warning lights and manoeuvre you gently to the side of the road. It's all very reassuring and you'd expect a degree of level two semi-autonomous driving tech to be available on a car of this price. And sure enough, with the Driving Assistant Pro Pack fitted, there's an active cruise control with stop and go function that combines with a steering and lane control assistant and works at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. The steering and lane control assistant takes its cues from road markings and vehicles driving ahead and works with the driver to keep the car in the lane detected by the system. So you can keep track of all this stuff. An assisted view in the instrument cluster gives the driver an overview of all the activated safety systems and their functionality. The central area of the cockpit display reserved for a three-dimensional mock-up of the vehicle and its surroundings. Here, the driver can see an image of the cars, trucks and motorcycles detected by the cameras and sensors in the driver's current lane, along with those in any adjacent lanes.
It was brave of BMW not to offer its three-litre mild hybrid diesel engine here, given that diesel power has been far and away the preferred choice of customers in the last two generations of 7 Series. Still, the Bavarian brand is determined to move into this new electrified era, hence its insistence that UK customers of this 7 should be committed to plugging their cars in. If your preference in doing that is for a PHEV powertrain, then you'll be interested to know that thanks to a larger 18.7 kilowatt hour system battery, the plug-in hybrid versions of this Mark 7 7 Series can take you way further than the previous G12 generation 745E plug-in petrol variant could go. That old model's 36 mile EV range figure is raised to a best of 53 miles with its G70 version and the efficiency stats are much better as well. The base 750e xDrive is rated at 22 grams per kilometre and 282.4 mpg on the combined cycle. A big improvement but still one that leaves the car slightly on the back foot in comparison to the figures achieved by its most obvious rival the Mercedes S580 EL which manages up to 63 miles on EV charge plus 18 grams per kilometre of CO2 and up to 353.1 mpg. If you'd prefer the faster M760e xDrive PHEV variant, the stats are 25 grams per kilometre and 256.8 mpg. Either way, with a PHEV 7 Series, you'll be benefiting kind rated at just 8%, a taxation figure previously almost unimaginable with any kind of 7. As with any PHEV these days, don't take too much notice of the quoted fuel readings. In reality, even if you regularly plug in, your fuel consumption isn't likely to rise far above the levels achieved by the old 730D diesel. For real efficiency, of course, BMW wants you to go all electric with the i7 full EV variant we're testing here. All derivatives use the same 101.7 kilowatt hour battery, but the entry level variant, which does without the weight of all wheel drive, offers a best EV range figure of 379 miles, which curiously is 8 miles less driving range than the mid level xDrive 60 version we're trying here. This 60 model is WLTP rated at 360 to 387 miles between charges and BMW quotes an energy consumption figure of between 3.2 and 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Though our test figure here, monitored via provided journey data section of the centre screen, has been more like 2.9 kilowatt hours. However you rate it, those figures are significantly down on what you get from this model's key arch rival, the Mercedes EQS which in mainstream 450h plus form manages up to 440 miles in equivalent AMG line premium trim. To be fair though, that Merc has substantially less power, 360 horsepower, against this i7 xDrive 60 models 544. If the outputs were comparable, BMW thinks it would achieve parity with an EQS, and support for that view comes when you learn that in its more powerful M70 xDrive form, the i7 returns up to 348 miles between charges, virtually the same as the comparably powerful Mercedes-AMG EQS 53 formatic. The other thing we should point out, which applies to all i7s, is that should your remaining battery charge be insufficient to reach your destination, there's a get out of jail clause in the form of a screen selectable max range feature. This increases potential mileage by between 15 and 25%, but you won't want to use it unless absolutely necessary because it virtually disables the climate system and, more seriously, if you've motorway miles to do, limits the car to 60 miles an hour. BMW certainly worked hard here at achieving EV parity with Mercedes. The ultra-slim, high-voltage batteries heated using a dedicated 5.5 kilowatt electric flow heater. And there's a standard heat pump which draws heat from the ambient air so the climate system fan doesn't have to generate it. On top of that, the adaptive recuperation feature, familiar from the BMW iX and BMW i4 models, has been further honed for the i7 and is now also able to take downhill sections and information from the traffic light recognition function into account. 
Adaptive recuperation generally allows the intensity of brake energy regeneration during overrun and braking to be automatically optimised for the road situation, as detected using data from the navigation setup and the driver assistance systems sensors. When approaching a junction, for example, the level of recuperation can be increased, even if route guidance isn't activated, thereby feeding energy back into the battery while harnessing the deceleration effect at the same time. On the open road, the coasting function can take over, allowing the car to freewheel with no drive power whenever the driver eases off the accelerator. Energy is no longer supplied to the two electric motors in this state, meaning no battery power is being consumed. What about charging? Well, like Mercedes, BMW remains committed to a 400 volt electrical infrastructure for its EVs. Unlike the more modern 800 volt system you'll find in a comparable Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron GT or Genesis G80 electrified. All those models as a result able to use the new generation of ultra fast public DC charging stations where they can charge it up to 350 kilowatts. This i7 is limited to 195 kilowatts of DC charging at a high power charging station which allows 106 miles of range to be added in just 10 minutes while a 10 to 80 percent charge is possible in 34. Back at home, you can set up your charging regime using the BMW app or with the provided widget sections on the centre display. AC charging is possible at a rate of up to 11 kilowatts and hooked up to a 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box, a full charge would need 16 hours and 15 minutes. For the first time on a BMW EV, with the i7, it's possible to store customised charging settings for multiple individual charging points which will then be automatically used the next time the car returns to a charging point stored in the car's memory. In addition, the battery will be preheated on approach to a high power charging station, something you can do manually if the car's navigation route guidance function hasn't been activated. Thanks to improved charging software, that cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system also helps to further enhance this i7's performance on long journeys. For instance, a charging optimised route is calculated as soon as the destination has been entered, should the vehicle's current range not be enough to reach the destination. Live data is processed during the journey, allowing charging stations to be automatically added to the itinerary if any of the stations originally planned for charging stops no longer have any availability. By default, the drive system is set to ensure that the vehicle reaches both the final destination and the charging stops with a charge level of at least 10%. The BMW charging package comes as standard on the i7, which gives owners attractive kilowatt hour tariffs for AC and DC charging throughout the UK and Europe. The high power charging network run by the BMW Group's joint venture Ionity also forms part of the BMW charging network. Almost 16,000 charging points are included in the UK and Ireland, while the monthly fee for BMW charging and Ionity is waived for the first 12 months for all retail customers. On delivery of your i7, you'll be given a BMW charging card, which entitles you to special tariffs operated by the BMW charging network, which in turn connects you into one of the world's largest public charging networks, all of it accessible using just that RFID card, or if you'd prefer, a provided app. In this country, you'll be able to use charge points operated by BP Pulse, ESB, Osprey, Source London, ChargePoint Network UK and others. High power charging stations via the Ionity network are also part of the BMW charging network. At the time of this test combined, this gave i7 drivers access to over 8,500 AC and 1,500 DC charging points across the UK, plus a further 162,000 AC and 11,000 DC charging points across Europe. Both i7 models are supplied complete with a flexible fast charger and a Mode 3 charging cable for use at public charging stations. 
Annoyingly, you'll have to pay extra for a charging cable for a domestic socket. What else? Well, with an i7, there are, of course, all the usual electric car benefits. Taxation is at the lowest rates around, based on the zero tailpipe emissions concept. Though, of course, there are emissions linked to the car's production and likely energy used. VED, or car tax, is set at zero for electric cars, and company car tax is the lowest rate at 2% BIK. With both of these figures, as well as free entry to the London congestion charge zone, applicable until 2025. Back to the 7 Series range as a whole, when it comes to insurance, both the i7 and the PHEV 7 Series models are rated at the top of the shop, Group 50. As for servicing intervals, well, like other BMWs, this one has condition-based servicing, which uses sensors and algorithms to individually calculate the condition of the most important wear and tear items, like the brakes and the car's operating fluids. Condition-based servicing also monitors the time and mileage-dependent scope of any needed maintenance work. A vehicle status section of the centre screen shows tyre pressures, service requirements, and a check control for major functions. Finally, a few words about this model's production eco-friendliness. This car's German Dingolfing factory is carbon neutral, and BMW reckons that utilising green electricity for battery cell production and making increased use of secondary raw materials cuts CO2 emissions by around 20%. Around 30% of every 7 Series is made from recycled material. Take the floor coverings made from a synthetic yarn called Econil, which is sourced from recycled fishing nets and plastic waste. The door panelling and bumpers are fashioned from recycled plastic, and both the interior headliner and the pillar trims are made from recycled PET plastic bottles. All good to know. Nearly 2 million 7 Series saloons have been sold since production first began back in 1977. But the significance of this model line goes far beyond mere sales figures. Most of the technology that buyers of affordable BMWs enjoy today first appeared on a 7. And since the turn of the century, this design has provided the engines, drive lines, and body framing for modern era Rolls Royces. In short, it's a crucial car for BMW. But would you walk past a Mercedes S-Class or that brand's EQS EV to buy one? Previously, that might have been something a potential customer would have thought long and hard about. But this seventh generation model has a much more distinct appeal, even if you don't go for this all-electric i7 version. The key here is that the Munich maker has at last properly differentiated this G70 7 Series design from its humbler executive models and given it a more distinct visual personality. Not everyone likes the more imposing front end, but no one can ignore it and it's got people talking about this car again instead of wondering why BMW still makes it. Less controversial is the more opulent cabin, and as a result, if you're fortunate enough to have a chauffeur, this 7 Series now might be a particularly appealing choice, especially if it's specified with the rear theatre screen system we've been trying here. Even if you like to drive yourself, this BMW might well present a more engaging option than its most obvious rivals. As we've discovered in this test, the brand has clearly gone to considerable trouble to preserve its trademark drivability in this car. Yes, even in this heavy i7 model. We're disappointed though that this all electric version doesn't get closer to its Mercedes EQS arch rival in terms of driving range. Overall though, we think your typical Asian or American plastic surgeon or company director will love this 77. And there's just a chance that you might as well.